Hey guys, welcome to the Halo Cannon post E3 Q&A. Over 300 questions were posted, so today we're going to answer some. I won't be answering all 300 as some were repeats and 300 is a little crazy. I do have a day job and other videos to work on, so I hope you all understand. Of course, I will treat the questions in a first come first serve manner to keep things fair. Something else to talk about and something I'm sure many of you have noticed is that the title of this video says part one and isn't all that long especially compared to past Q&A videos. That is because, a little while ago, I got a copyright strike, which, among other things, means I can't upload a video longer than 15 minutes. Again, I hope you all understand. Anyway, with the disclaimers out of the way, let's dive in. Graham Rich asks, What is the largest discrepancy in Halo lore? My first pick would be I Love Bees, but I'd say that's a bit of a cop-out. So, besides that, the biggest discrepancy in Halo is probably the number of Spartan 2s. We've been consistently told that 33 survived their augmentations and that by 2552, there were only 25 left. Still, over the years, we've seen far more Spartan 2s die or go missing than just 8. Halsey's journal tries to rectify this in a couple of ways. First, it mentions that the Spartans who washed out, aka died, weren't actually cremated as we were originally told in Halo the Fall of Reach, but were put into cryostasis in hopes that they might someday be resuscitated. This was indeed the case for some Spartans, such as Black Team, and for the current head of Oni, Saren Osman, once Saren 019. The second way is that Halsey mentions a lie about the number of active Spartan 2s. Of course, we're never given any proper context or further hints at what she means, so the line is basically moot. So, yeah, I'd say the number of Spartan 2s active throughout the Covenant War is probably the largest discrepancy out there. Of course, there are several, several more. Pat Friend asks, Do you think the Insurrection will play into Halo 5? It would be awesome to play as MC or Locke and fight other humans or Spartan 4s. It would also tie into Hunt the Truth since Petra seems to be continuing Ben's quest to reveal the truth about Oni, and if she does, then the Outer Colonies might be pissed and likely start a war. It's hard to say at this point, and I could see this going either way. However, my gut tells me no. I would love human enemies in a Halo title, but something in me just says that we're not quite there yet. Besides, could you imagine the outrage and nonsense COD comparisons? Jay Flint asks, Who is your favorite Halo character and why? Tough one, but I think I'd go with Admiral Preston Cole. The guy was a huge hero in the Human Covenant War, and he went out by igniting a brown dwarf to take out a Covenant Armada. That is some pure, grade A, badass. Predator Hunter Gaming asks, What are your thoughts on Halo 5 Warzone, and do you think we will be able to forge a Warzone map? Warzone looks to be an awesome new game type and a decent replacement for Firefight and Spartan Ops. Decent, not perfect. Sadly, we will not be able to forge on Warzone. Bijo Sebastian asks, Do you think they will bring AI into Forge? No, not this time. Jab91 asks, Why do you think the control rooms of Installation 04 and 05 look so different? <laughs> Jab with the hard questions. I'll be honest, I am not entirely sure. Truly, I wish the Halo ring that Mendic and Bias had stolen in Halo Primordium had been Installation 05, as that would explain a number of discrepancies and mysteries about this ring. Installation 05 is very unique, even without its different control room, and I'm confident that they are related, somehow. However, I can't imagine what that reason is. Gary McLean asks, What do you think is the endgame for the Master Chief's character? Thanks and keep up the great work on being my go-to Halo channel. And thank you for the support. Regarding your question, it's kind of hard to say. We know that 343 wants to explore his humanity, but that's not a goal, that's a path. It's honestly not something I've given a whole lot of thought to, but now I can't help but think about it. Napalm Spartan 117 asks, So is the rec system like credits where you use it to buy armor and skins, along with game weapons in Warzone? More or less, yeah, based on what we've seen. Danilo Martinez asks, is there already existing lore information on the Forerunner being from the E3 demo calling himself the Warden Eternal? Some loose connections, yes. In Halo Cryptum, there was a being known as the Warden present at the trial for Faber, aka the Master Builder. He was in charge of detaining accused criminals and providing their defense. Of course, in Cryptum, the Warden was described as a monitor, not the being we see in Halo 5. Further, there were never any mentions of the Warden being a guardian of the Domain. The other connection that came to mind was called Haruspis. This was a collective of Forerunners, not unlike Catalog, responsible for guarding the Domain and acting as an intermediary for other Forerunners accessing the Domain's vast source of information. Energized Gaming Guy asks, Do you think playing an Elite will return in multiplayer? Elites are not returning, I'm very sad to say. Do you think there will be a lack of weapons or cool weapons? A little. 
Halo Reach certainly had the best variety of weapons in the Halo game, but 343 are stepping things up with stuff like the Hydra and the Plasma Caster. Gabe Newell asks, why was Half-Life 3 taken away from me? Because it hasn't been worth the wait. Dark Starnel asks, what Covenant weapon do you want to see back in Halo 5 Guardians, like the Plasma Rifle? Needle Rifle or Focus Rifle, I'd say. They were unique weapons rather than just Covenant equivalents of a human weapon. Gunless Snake asks, Halo Cannon, how do you think the Guardians figure into the greater Halo lore? Perhaps they were part of those other thousand plans that were tried and failed. Hugo Gaming Turret W asks, I saw in the Warzone gameplay and other sources that there has been some changes to most non-human equipment. Do you know of any details of changes being done to the following? Storm Rifle, Covenant Carbine, Plasma Pistol, and Suppressor. But if you maybe know about others, feel free to mention them. The Storm Rifle does more damage, but overheats quicker. The Covenant Carbine, Plasma Pistol, and Suppressor look largely the same in terms of gameplay, minus the fact that they all feature the Smart Scope now. The bolt shot was pretty heavily changed, as it fires a burst of shots to track your enemies to some degree, and lacks the overcharge mode from Halo 4. Also, I don't get Linda's helmet. She seems to have glass objects on more places than for her eyes. I know she's a sniper, but are those more optics, or are they completely cosmetic? I'm sure they're meant to serve a purpose, but I'm kind of at a loss as to how. Maybe they enhance her peripheral vision. Portable Player 4 asks, What are your thoughts on the Elites in Halo 5 being the Halo 4 model? Should 343 have worked on a model similar to Halo 2 Anniversary and kept canon consistency, rather than reuse the one from Halo 4? Honestly, I like the Halo 4 Elites a lot, so I personally have no qualms with 343 using that again. To be perfectly honest, I wish they'd use the Halo 4 Elites in Halo 2 Anniversary. Francis Okoyo asks, Do you think that there will be a custom limited edition Halo 5 Xbox One? I'm holding off on buying a one because that's what I've been waiting for. There will be. Josh Holmes confirmed on Twitter a while back. Interestingly though, his tweet has since disappeared. Nathan Bartlett asks, Do you think that there will be a boss in Halo 5? It seems like. We have bosses in Warzone, and the Warden Eternal seems like a mini-boss of sorts. And of course we have that new Covenant Walker. Robert K. Wolf asks, Is it possible that Eddie Buck will ever fight side-by-side -side with Master Chief, or should I abandon all hope? I'd say it's very possible. Jaden Jenkins asks, why is there a lack of news post E3? Basically because E3 was a huge news blowout, so game devs have to go home and actually work on their games again. Marco Rostovsky asks, Do you think that maybe Buck will betray Locke and join the Chiefs team? Nah, Buck's a loyal soldier through and through. Besides, I'm thinking all of Fireteam Osiris may start to see the Chiefs side of things at some point. Lewis Pearson asks, What are your thoughts on the pricing for the Collector and Limited Collector's Edition of Halo 5? Love them both, though I'm less ecstatic about the Collector's Edition coming with a digital copy rather than a physical one. The statue for the Collector's Edition looks awesome, though I kinda want to see what sort of material it's made out of. AZWZ Official asks, How long do you think the campaign will be, hour-wise? Hopefully longer than Halo 4. Definitely longer than Halo 4, perhaps longer than Halo CE, but not quite as long as Halo 2. De Guzman asks, Do you think Halo 5 will be one of the best Halos? Yes. Do you think that the sword the Warden uses in the campaign demo is a weapon that we can use? Doubtful, but here's hoping. Frazzled MKM asks, Could you go back and rewatch the terminals from Halo Combat Evolved and see the information 343 says about the domain? He states that it was the main source of Forerunner knowledge and that they lost contact with it. Spark really doesn't talk that much about the domain. If you want to learn more about it, read the Forerunner saga or check out the article on Halopedia. In short though, the domain was a Forerunner repository of information. Towards the end of the Forerunner Flood War, the domain became inaccessible, due to a number of factors. When the Halo Rings fired, it was thought lost forever, but it seems that it was only out of commission for a very long time. Why it's suddenly back is unknown. Love of Jesus Mark II asks, Non-Halo question, what do you think of Nintendo trying to butcher the Metroid franchise? Kind of extremely upsetting, considering how awesome and important Metroid is to gaming as a whole. Darth Mango asks, What do you think happened to Romeo? Maybe Buck just got sick of Romeo's mouth. Most likely though, Buck just felt that this mission took priority. Dryzen asks, Do you think Blue Team may indeed have to fight rogue Spartans along the way? If not Spartans, maybe insurrectionists, we've been hearing about them a lot lately. No, and no, I'm sorry to say. I don't think 343 has any plans for us to fight other Spartans in the campaign, and given what we've seen, it seems Halo 5 is very much Covenant and Promethean focused. Of course, there could always be some surprises. Keyboard Athlete asks, Do you think we'll ever hear about Spartan 3 Gamma Company or Grey Team again? We might hear about Gamma Company and Halo Last Light coming out in September. 
Raid Team, I have doubts about. Honestly, I'd kind of like 343 to leave them alone after what happened to Black Team. Do you think that Infinity could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Covenant Supercarrier such as Long Night of Solace? Maybe? Supercarriers have a lot of mass and armament on the Infinity, but I could see Infinity at least giving the Supercarrier a run for its money. Mr. DB asks, Who do you think the Warden Eternal is? His place in the plot and whether he's ultimately good or bad, in terms of him seeming to side himself with the Master Chief, but fighting Locke. I think the Warden Eternal might have some connection to the digitized Didact, since he does have that Promethean look to him. Of course, he could ultimately turn out to be a neutral party, just doing his job. Sharon Laser asks, Who do you think the Guardians are? I think the Guardians are a what rather than a who. What they are seems to be some kind of giant vehicle, of sorts. And do you think the Flood will make an appearance? I'm still hoping, but I'm leaning towards no these days. Maybe towards the end of the campaign. Tor Magnus Volstead asks, Is there any chance of split-screen being put back in the game? From what Frank O'Connor has said, the lack of campaign split-screen is related to Halo 5 running at 60 frames per second. Deacus the Argonian asks, Do Kig Yar lay eggs? Yes. Amirson Ali asks, Do you think Warzone will have enough players, and do you think it will just become running around a lot till you finally find someone? Given what we've seen, Warzone has plenty to keep a player occupied, be that the AI enemies, the bosses, or enemy players. The objectives definitely keep players moving around. Access14 asks, What do you think Jewel is up to in Halo 5? Do you think he'll die? If so, by who? The Arbiter, or Locke, or by his hunger for power? Jewel's working towards his ultimate goal of human extinction, though specifically, I can't imagine. I mean, he's about to enter the absolute record in Halo Escalation, so it's hard to imagine what he's doing after that. Perhaps he's going after another Forerunner superweapon. I don't think Jewel will die, but it could happen. Maybe that's why the Covenant is finally breaking, as Locke puts it in the campaign. Now, if anyone does kill Jewel, right now it looks like it could be Locke, although I'd love to see the Arbiter be the one to do it. Dead Gamer asks, Do you think the Warden Eternal is an enemy hostile only towards Locke? I think it's hostile towards anyone that isn't called to the domain. Blake Barrick asks, Do you think that Halo 5 will explore the Songheili Civil War, or even drop some Kilo 5 Easter eggs? I think that the Songheili Civil War will most likely be background flavor, rather than something that is explored in depth, though I'd love to be proven wrong. I doubt we'll see any Kilo 5 stuff, though. Kyle Gerard asks, What are the Prophets and Brutes up to now? The Prophets have gone into hiding, apparently taking many of the Huragok with them. The Brutes seem pretty fractured, fighting with some Covenant factions, against others, and against each other. Do you think that they will have a game on a Halo installation? We've had more games in Mombasa than on Halo rings. I think that we might be done fighting on a Halo ring for now, but it's not impossible that we might return to one. Robert the Boss asks, Multiple questions for you. Enjoy. What game, if any, do you think that we will get slash do you want to see released between Halo 5 Guardians and Halo 6? e.g. ODST 2, Halo Wars 2, etc, etc. I'd personally love to see ODST or Wars 2. Probably Halo Wars 2, since I want to know what the hell happened to Spirit of Fire. Also, another Halo RTS would be awesome. Do you think that we will see Benjamin or Petra in Halo 5 Guardians? Petra maybe, Ben, probably not. How do you think they'll explain the absence of Romeo and Fireteam Osiris? Raisins. But honestly, I don't think they will. Can Jetfuel melt steel beams? No, but it doesn't need to melt them, just weaken them. When do you think we'll hear from the Spirit of Fire and her crew? When Halo Wars 2 comes out, so probably never. Do you think that the Outer Colonies have the right to independence, free from UEG control, and the right to govern themselves? I do. I'm a brown coat at heart, so I can't help but feel a little sympathy towards the any cause. Of course, the way they go about fighting for independence leaves a lot to be desired. What do you think of the statue that comes with the Legendary Edition of Halo 5? It seems pretty cool. Though I'd like to know what sort of material it's made from to judge. Since it was revealed that the image previously thought to have been from the Halo 5 terminals is actually from the animated series, Halo Fall of Reach, what do you think the terminals in Halo 5 will be about slash reveal? I'd love if they explore more of the Forerunner Flood War, but I'm thinking they'll focus largely on what the Guardians are. But of course, these two subjects don't have to be mutually exclusive. Do you think that we'll ever find out who crashes on the Halo ring in the Halo CEA terminals? Probably not. That's all I can think of at the moment. Have a nice day, Robert. Thanks, you too, man.